Hello and welcome to this Blitz Report tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be adding Blitz Reports to EBS Forms using the Zoom functionality that Oracle provide uh, that's generally not used but uh, it's incredibly useful uh, and can be used to replace the rather long-winded uh, export function for exporting your form data. Uh, first of all a little bit of about Blitz Report, it's uh, fully integrated with EBS, uses the same form, so there's nothing new to learn. Um, it, it basically sits in its own form, runs uh, reports through the concurrent manager, exactly the same, uh, only it delivers them through Excel, uh, to, to Excel. It doesn't use um, the XML layer, so it's very straightforward, data's fast, and uh, can replace your BI publisher reports as well. Um, what does it look like? So um, the zoom function is next to the um, to the edit uh, little icon there on your toolbar. Um, so each of these uh, reports that are run through Blitz Report um, can be assigned uh, to a specific form, and you can have several on the form. So for example, on order management, you might want to have an export of the sales orders or the associated invoices, or if you're working uh, with purchasing dropship or external uh, suppliers, then again, you might want to have your purchase report. Uh, it can take the information from the field. So if you wanted to take the data from, in this particular case, from AC networks and then run your export just for those uh, customers, then it would do that as well. So without further ado, let's get started and we'll go across into EBS. Um, and as you can see here, the standard menu Blitz Report is uh, installed on the, all of the menus uh, as you dictate during the installation process. And obviously, you can create your Blitz Reports from new, um, or you can use one of the um, you know one of the several hundred reports that we've got available here. Um, <clears throat> within uh, the different categories. So we've got this option of the different toolkits. Uh, there's there for cost accounting, those of you working with manufacturing, purchasing, etc. cetera. Um, there's database tuning uh, reports, um, data management for those using the command centers. We manage those push programs. Um, then you've got uh, your operational and your support uh, reports. So, you know, if you go in any of these, there's plenty of reports to be uh, assigning uh, for all the key areas like AP, GL, AR, fixed assets, uh, inventory, and so on. Um, so what you would do, and just uh, pick an order management report, uh, very simple, it's something you can do as a functional level. Uh, so within the setup of the form, during the assignment uh, aspect, you can either assign the report to a particular request group or an application user, etc., or you can assign using the form feature, which is uh, where you basically specify the form name, which you can find in the help uh, in the help option. So uh, about Oracle applications will always give you the form name, and then <clears throat> you can use the um, the concept of uh, form block and form field, which you can get very simply using examine. And I'll just quickly show you how to do that. Um, there is a blog written for this, and you can find that on the enginetics.com under the blog uh, section. Uh, so if you wanted to do this step by step, or you can follow this video, of course. Uh, so within um, order organizer, those of you that will be setting this function up, um, you would have to get the name of the form, as I mentioned, and OEXOE ORD is the name of this particular uh, form, uh, more or less. Uh, so we just see it here as we go down, OEXOE ORD. Um, <clears throat> now, if you wanted to find out the name of a field, you'd go into the uh, diagnostic examine. Obviously, you'd need to have access to this. And you can see the block is order summary, and you can see that the field is called sold to. Now, this will then take the data from the field and use it as an input to the reporting to the reports parameter. And I'll just show you how that is. So the first thing you notice here is that the zoom icon is illuminated. Uh, that means it's active and that there are reports that have been assigned already. Uh, and as mentioned, you can put as many reports onto the, you know, into that zoom function as you like. Um, and in this case, we've, we've got a raft of reports here for invoice transactions associated with orders. We've got our sales order headers and lines. This is the one I'm going to be running shortly. Um, we've got order holds and we've got the purchase uh, information. I'll just select this one. Um, as you can see, as we um, as we stood in that field, 
the AC networks, then the parameter has been passed with the customer name. So this is very good if you've got a phone call, you're in customer services, and you just need to produce a massive uh, data export, but you don't want to use the export function because that obviously uh, will tie up your, your form for several minutes if you've got uh, you know thousands of lines. Um, so this is actually going to run through the concurrent manager uh, and it's going to deliver into Excel format rather than CSV. And of course, that uh, has its great, great advantages in that you don't have to reformat uh, columns. So for example, all the data types are correctly recognized, filters are applied so that the user doesn't have to do any additional work. You see here, we just go across, we've got the full export of our data. It's very quick, as you could see. Um, and it's running through the concurrent request system. So you see this uh, as a request, um, you've got it there. Uh, and if we were to edit the name of that, you'll see that we basically prefix uh, Blitz report with the name of the report. So, you know, you don't have to register these in system administration. There's only one report that's uh, installed and that's called Blitz report. Um, these are basically reports that are version controlled within the Blitz report architecture. Um, so I'll just show you how that's done. So within here, we've got a full audit of what reports we've developed. And, you know, you can put comments on here about the different versions and you can roll back if uh, if you need to by just simply cut and paste and, and, and copy into here. Um, so we just close that. Um, uh, as I said, you can then go ahead and, um, well, we can close this. A user, uh, from the user perspective, can change the layout of the report. They can't actually create the report. That's, that's only designed for developers, people with SQL access and knowledge, good knowledge. Um, but a business user can lay out the report themselves. Um, and as you can see here on the left, we've got all the available columns. And then on the right, we've got the report display columns. And it's really just a simple uh, drag and drop type uh, exercise, similar to folders actually, uh, whereby you just move things around or you can take them from the display to the non-display side, and then you would regenerate your report. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to do that, but within the template, you've also got things like email. If you want to have multiple email addresses, you can change the outputs. If you want to send it out to other data warehouse types, um, we've, we support Tableau and Microsoft um, Power BI as well. So that's a, a little flavor for you of how this all hangs together. Uh, I hope you found this informative and useful. Um, as I say, we, we've got this uh, installed in many customers and they really find this much uh, more advantageous than using the rather archaic uh, export function that you get. Um, my name is Glenn Whelan. If you need to find out anything further about this, then by all means, uh, drop me a line at enginatics.com uh, uh, and we'll go through this uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, that's it. If you just uh, want to see, uh, yes, just um, have a look at this blog on the Enginatics uh, blog site. Um, thank you. Goodbye.